once I saw you on it yesterday, I had been hearing about it, but I was like, man, if you can stream on multiple platforms at once. Bro, it's so nice. Yeah. So now I got it on. The only thing I wish we could do is have it stream with Instagram too. Yeah. And so I could go live on Instagram. Right. Let me, um, I got to share this again to a bunch of other people. So what, um, what, how's your business changed since we last met, man? Man, it's changed dramatically, man. Cause you know, when we met, I was just doing wholesaling, the wholesaling part on my own, you know, just if it, it wasn't really a business, it was more so if a deal comes across, I know this is what I'm gonna do with it, you know, but going to that event, it's, it, it it allowed me to open up my thinking. So I wanted to make that part of the business, the actual business instead of a hustle, so to speak. So, you know, since that, I got the office, we got, um, we, we hired, you know, acquisitions guys, transaction coordinators. Um, oh, yeah, really and, oh yeah. Yeah. Now we really, from that event and my partner, the guy that I partnered up with, he was at that event too, but we didn't meet at the event. We met, we we would walk in a um, three hundred unit apartment building, um, you know, trying to take that down, and uh, you know we we just kept seeing each other. Then we you know we came together. Was like, man, we might as well do this together. So you know we we've been kind of moving ever since then. Um, did you guys end up buying that three hundred unit complex? No, nah, we didn't. Um, so with in the due diligence, we tried to get a price reduction. They weren't really having it, so. You know, it kind of fell by the wayside. But, you know, it's what came out of that was a lot of relationships. You know, right. um, like I said, I met, I met my partner down there, um, Alvin Johnson, who who I met at the event also. Did you partner um, up with Alvin? Yeah, so, yeah, he was a GP on that. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was a GP on that. So um, and it's crazy. Like, all this stuff came from that event. I met Alvin at that event. I met my partner at that event. So, you know, I like to go to events to meet people. And when I learn something new, it's always a bonus. Right. Um, yeah. So, sorry, man. Now, you want to introduce yourself, what you did before. This is I met him at a Rafael Vargas event. Um, we were all just down there hanging out, somehow connected. And both of our businesses have really, like, blown up since the event. I think the – I mean – what Raf offered was great info, but the networking that came out of that man was huge. Yeah, it was huge, man. So, a little background on me: um, played professional basketball eight years. Um, retired in 2015. When I retired in 2015, I, I jumped straight into real estate. Um, I got my first start as a realtor. Um, I put my three years in and became a broker, and uh, now I started my own brokerage. And, I, and as we was talking earlier, you know, now I have an investment arm inside of the brokerage so we're just growing man and now with post pro capital that's the um fund to rate to raise money for syndications for the apartments so we're building everything out man we taking action you know when we for me you know when i go to events i don't look at the price tag like right. i don't care how much it costs it's 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 my job to get that money back 10 20 times over you know so um, I'm, I'm pro, I'm, I'm always going to events. I'm always going to meet people. You know, like I said, good people, you get to meet good people. Like I met Strat. I, and the reason why we connected, I found out you play football and it was like that instant connection. Like, Oh man, you used to play football too. Okay. You know, cause athletes, we speak the same language. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was, um, crazy. Who else did I meet out there? Um, Alvin, Josue. Nick Perry. I mean, Nick Perry's yep. an absolute savage. Yeah, I met Nick Perry, too. He's cool, dude. I need to follow up with Nick. All right. Bro, met a ton of good people. Didn't yeah. sleep. Spent, all, spent as much money as possible. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how them events be, right? <laughs> we gotta, bro, hey, we we'd gotta go bro, we'd wake up. Like, so I remember the first day I woke up at, like, 7 a.m., went and got a workout in. Like, went to the event and everything else. The event got out at 6 and then we drank and partied until like 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and I went yeah. to sleep, woke back up at seven, did the same thing. Like I, it was crazy. So much knowledge though. And like people who are actually doing real business. That's when you go to a lot of meetups in your area, you get kind of um 
no one else is like doing it at a high level. Like at that event, yeah. um, there was a dude out of, oh, Matt. I don't know if you met Matt Simmons. I met Matt out of there, bro. A year ago, he was doing no business. Now yeah. he's doing like one, one million something. Like, or even oh, crazy. Biggest wholesaler in Philly now. Oh, word. That's nice. In Pittsburgh, actually. But like just killing it and stuff like that has been awesome. Yeah, I love I love hearing stories like that, man, especially when you go somewhere to get information because you get a lot of people who go to these conferences and they never apply it. You know, they they just coming back two, three thousand in the red. You know, right. they get you know, you get excited for a minute. But they just can't keep that motivation going. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, it's good when I hear stories like that, when people actually put the feet to the pavement and, and put the work in, you know, because as entrepreneurs, we don't get we don't get any guarantees. You know, we got to go out here and eat what we kill every day. Right. You know, it's like we wake up every day like, you know, what the money, <laughs> you know, it ain't, it ain't no check waiting at the end of the week, you know, so we got to really go out there and get it. So I love hearing stories like that when people, um, you know, actually go out to what they want. Yeah, man. And so um, tell me about why you picked real estate out of everything. Man, I, I picked real estate because um, when I was younger, my uncle, he was always in the real estate. He stayed in Detroit, so we never really seen him. But when we did see him, you know, we, I was just going to keep it real. We we knew he was doing better than us. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, KC doing real estate up there. You know, like, what, like what's going on? But he always used to give me books. Like, he was real big on books. He's always give me books. Every time he saw me, he gave me real estate books, um, financial books, anything like that. And I, it just, you know, it just stuck with me. So when I was, when I was playing basketball, um, you know, and I'm in the airport, I'm in the bookstore trying to find books to read. So he kind of planted that seed into me. And, um, you know, I'm on a plane reading about real estate, millionaire real estate investor, Robert Kiyosaki books. So real estate for me coming from basketball, I had to pick something where I can make a lot of money. Like I wanted my goal when I retired, it was like, man, how can I supplement what I'm already making? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Real estate was one of those vehicles. So that's kind of how I got into it. You know, like I said, and being a realtor wasn't in my plans, but that was my way in. So once I got my way in and got my knowledge up, let me show my, my acquisition. I just walked in. Let me let me show my door. Yo, fella, I'm live. <clears throat> my bad. You good, man? It's, it's Friday, man. They got the PlayStation in here, man. We we just vibing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i forgot where I, where, where I was at but like yeah so me, me being a realtor was my way in and once i got in i started working with investors so one of my one of one, one day i sold a um commercial building so the way i was thinking as a realtor i was chasing that commission check but that was really i mean i ended up making forty thousand dollars on that deal but that was one of the worst decisions i made because i was thinking as a realtor you know, once I sold it, it was like I got that I got that check one time. But every time I pass by that building, I know that that guy is getting paid every month. And every it ain't month. no telling what it appreciated since 2015, 2016. Yep. You know, so from that point on, I started thinking as an investor. Like even now when I get listings, I underwrite it to see how can I buy it. You know, I've I've, I've bought some of my own listings. You know, so it's just changing that thought process. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I remember I was like, man, I need to make as much money as I'd make in the NFL if I don't do anything. Exactly. I'm, and, go ahead. And I was like, man, like practice squad money is like 70 grand a year. I was like, oh, I can do that. I can do that. Now, like if we, I only make 70 grand, I'll be furious. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's just a different type of mindset. Yeah. Like, once yeah. you get into the game, too. Right. Right, man. Um, especially with us athletes, because. I don't know about you, Strat. You what you about six three, six four? I'm six two. Six two. See, like me, I can't, I can't be, you know. So I, I gotta have, <laughs> I gotta be at a job where I'm getting paid, like you know, because that, like, you, you see a lot of you, you don't want to see somebody six eight working in Walmart. People coming up like, hey, what happened? <laughs> like, if, if I was your height, hey, you know, if people, if I was your height, I'd be in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> So they gonna try to clown you. So you you gotta get it if you're an athlete. So that's why yeah. you know with what I'm coming out with with this transition program, helping athletes transition from sports 
you know, into business, you oh, know, to help to that help bridge huge. that gap. Like, let's talk about, I mean, how at least for me, like I didn't even go pro. I played like I made it the Seattle Seahawks tryouts, but all my life was was football. And then after that, I had no idea what the hell to do with myself. Like mm -hmm. no identity, no life skills, no nothing. You right. Know what I'm like, cause it's just, you know how to play football and that's all. Right. That's all you're right. On. Exactly. And so what up? And the reason why I came up with this program is because this is what I went through. So I got injured at the worst time that you can probably get injured. I got injured my first professional year. So I hadn't even had time to get no money for real. You know, so I was out here trying to get a job to hold me over. And everybody kept saying I was overqualified and I didn't have any experience. So I was like, yeah, what the hell I go to college for? Right. So basically what that let me know is like, man, they're they not even really respecting the degree. You know, they they want they want, you know, experience and they want, you know, they want experience. So what what I'm doing with this transition program is giving giving athletes, you know, access to internships and stuff like that to build their experience, you know, while they're still playing. So when they retire, they can kind of segue and make a smooth transition into into business or whatever second career they want to go into, because it's not if it's when I thought I was going to play forever. Mentally, I still, I, I still can go up here, <laughs> but my body is like, nah, you done, you cook, you know? So, you know, it's, it's, it's not, if it's when you're going to retire. So why not, why people, why are you not preparing for it? Bro. I mean, so I'm thinking about doing that same thing just with Fresno state out here and like offering internships. Mm -hmm. We also have dudes who like come like who I played with like, hey man, can I work for you? Like, I mean, you can work for him for free, but like, what's your degree in? Right. Like, you have like legitimately the same thing. Like, do you have any experience? Like, what are your skills? Right. Like, I can just like have you come in here and like warm a seat. Like, I'm not gonna pay you to warm a seat, man. I need you to do something. Exactly. Like, yeah, you gotta you gotta come in and be hungry, be willing to learn, be willing to work. You yeah. know, especially with no experience, you gotta come in and do more. It's kind of like being a walk on. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like the walk ons, you gotta do more than the people who want scholarship. Like you really do, like to even you know, get on that level, you know. So it's the same thing with interns, but you know, we, we definitely respect the interns, you know, it's a way in. I'm 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 very big on internships, but when you come in, you do gotta add value. Yeah, man. I mean, but I think if I did it, I would be like one of the only businesses even offering an internship to Fresno State, man. Like, mm -hmm. at least football-wise. Like, we didn't have any internships. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you was just there, go play football, go home, drink, go play football, party. But, like, it wasn't, right. like, we had no internships. And my yeah. degree was in freaking communication. Like, what am I going to do with that? And, you know and, I mean? that's, and, that's, and that's good what you're doing, too, Strat. Like, you know, we got to give what we didn't have. Like, exactly. The way I think, I, I come up with stuff that I always would have wanted coming up. Like, um, I, I'll give you a personal example. Like for Father's Day, when I was growing up, Father's Day, my, my dad died when I was young. So Father's Day, you know, it's kind of like an empty day for me, mm -hmm. you know. But when I got older, I, I had to figure out a way to make this day meaningful. So I started a father-son um, sports camp where, you know, that we do like team drills. It's like a bonding. Instead of giving dad a tie, Come on, let's go out here and do some little fun drills against some other father and son duos. You know what I'm saying? And, and kind of make this a day. And for the kids who didn't have, you know, who didn't have a father, we have mentors in place for them so they don't feel left out. So, you know, I implemented that. And now Father's Day, I'm looking forward to it every year instead of, yep. you know, instead of like, uh, you know, so we got to, as athletes and not even just as athletes, whatever we didn't have growing up, we need to create it. Without a doubt. So let's uh, transition a little bit into your business, man. So like, what does it look like now? Like, what do you got going? So right now um, I got the brokerage. So I got agents under me. So um, I know when we met back in uh, last year at that event, I was still, I was a one man show. So since then I don't show houses anymore. I give them off to my agents. So the brokerage is semi running systematically. I still got a, a couple tweaks to make. We have um, United Property Buyers, which is our, you know, I don't want to say wholesaling business because we're looking to buy some too. You know, we want to cherry pick some deals as well. Yeah. So we have United Property Buyers um, in-house. So that's the, you know, investment firm and um, post-pro capital. 
um, where I'm getting revved up to start doing these syndications. Um, and that's a byproduct of this event, you know, um, this event that I'm having with all these different big names and you know, leader, leaders Huge. from different asset classes. Um, I basically, have you heard the term, don't be the smartest person in the room? Yeah. I, I, all I did was created the room I wanted to be in. This, like, I handpicked everybody, like, the best mobile home parks, the best fix and flippers, the best single family, the best wholesalers. We got Carlos Reyes coming, um, Corey Reed, um, my guy Sanji with the build a rent model. So he builds new construction developments, and they don't sell them. They, they rent them out. So that model, you know, self-storage, like, I took everybody, all the doers and, and you know, it, each asset class and put them in a the room with me. Yeah, and, and all the attendees. Um, who are the athletes you have on it? Who's the dude? For, I can't remember that dude's name for the life of me. He's like legit for, for the Seahawks. No, the basketball player is that Lou Williams? Oh, Lou Will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou Will, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, man. So me and Lou Will, we was teammates. Um, twice I had two stints, two stints with the Sixers. In 07, I was on the summer league team, and 09, they actually signed me for a little while. And um, you know, me and Lou. We, we played Pro-Am together, too. So we won a couple of championships in a Pro-Am here in Atlanta. So, you know, yeah, so that was that was that was an easy reach out. That's awesome. And so is he active? Like what what is it? I mean, when you're yeah, a pro athlete, like most of your life is um sports still or is he pretty active in his investment company? Like I know like Julio Jones, bro, big time developer out in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, he, he, I didn't know Julio Jones developed. Yeah, he's good. Like, He's a big time developer out there. Yeah, so I don't know what I'll lose into. I'm definitely trying to get him into real estate. Um, I know he has a record company, and I'm pretty sure he has some other stuff. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of guys they don't like to put their stuff out on on the front street. So, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm definitely trying to get him into some of these syndications. Uh, and that's and that's the reason why I'm bringing the athletes and and bringing them with the top notch investors, so we can, you know, so we can introduce them to the real estate investing game. So when you retire, you can make the same amount of money. And, you know, it's two it's two types of income, passive income and active income. And what I'm telling the athletes is you're getting a big check right now, but you're only getting it if you're active and you're not going to be active forever. So you you need to start building that passive lane as well, you know, so you, yep. can, kind of, you can live the same way, you know, once you're done. So. I mean, I'm like going broke. It's a legitimate thing. I mean, you think you're going to make money forever too. It's yeah, a, I mean, being an entrepreneur, it's, like, and it, it's not hard to go broke once the money stops. Like, if everything's going in the in the negative <laughs> in the back, you know, like it's it's really not hard. It's only a matter of time. So, you know, having having residual income, having cash flow, having assets, that's a way to you know negate that. For sure. And so, are you looking to get into mobile homes, like? Are you focused on syndication to mobile home, apartment complexes? What are you no, looking? me, I'm focused on apartment complexes and multifamily. Um, but it's, and, and this is what I'm telling everybody too. So I would call this a generalist event because it's not specific to one niche, but I'm very big on the fact that you can learn something from everybody you meet. So I'm not interested in mobile home parks at this time, but they may tell me a strategy that they're using to find mobile home parks that I can use to find in the asset class I want to be in. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm, I'm going to be just as tuned in to the mobile home parks and self storage as I am into the multifamily and the single family and the wholesaling. That's true. And so wholesaling wise, man, what are you guys doing marketing wise? Man, we're doing cold call. We call, we got 13 acquisition guys. We're doing all cold calling. I, Cause I feel in it's and we're going to get into SMS. And all that, but you know, like I said, we're we're just starting our our company as a company. You know, mm -hmm. he was doing his thing on his own. I was doing my thing on my own. Now we're you know we're just straight cold calling. We got thirteen acquisitions guys just calling all day on different shifts. Wow! So they're just work like eat and kill, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah, it's commission based. I mean, shit, I'm on commission based. So everybody in my organization is gonna be commission based too. You know, we all eat what we kill. Exactly. I, I, I wouldn't have it no other way. Hell yeah. Um, I'd be disrespectful if somebody tried to pay me hourly. Honestly. Right. I can't I'm do like, it anymore. So you mean to tell me you're going to pay me 
let's say twenty dollars an hour. Twenty dollars an hour, whether I do a good job or bad job, I don't know. That's a bad deal to me. Because if I do a good job, I might want a little more. Right. Or you know? salary, like you only get you get ninety grand for the year, regardless. That's all. Right. Exactly. No how good or how bad you do. Right. Like That's what if it. what if I what if I made the company a million dollars? I'm still only worth ninety. Like nah. Like I like percentages better. Like because we know what we're getting on the front end, and that keeps the overhead low. That's probably why we was able to still operate during COVID because I mean we didn't have any overhead. Yep. Yeah, well, so uh, go ahead, man. Now I'm just saying, like I mean, stuff like that happens. Like you know, it just came out the blue. Nobody was prepared for COVID. You know, but you know, you see all these big box companies, retail companies that's going out of business, filing bankruptcy. It's, it's, it's because of overhead because, you know, when you really look at it, the fact of the matter is the only thing that can run you out of business is expenses. You know, if, if, it, if you don't have any expenses, you can stay in business forever. Right. Yeah. Um, so We got the cold callers, SMS. What systems do you use to cold call? What are you using? Call tools, Zen call? We're using call tools. We was using Zen call. We was using Zen call. We didn't like the customer service, so we switched to call tools. Bro, um, I yeah. set up Zen call after that event, and then it was such it was so much money. Well, not a lot of money, but it was more money than I ever paid for call tools. Yeah. And then the customer service was awful. Nothing made sense. <laughs> right. Customer service, man. Like, um, I, yeah, I don't even want to say that, but like, yeah, the customer service was awful, man. It was it was horrible. So we we just had to go. We switched the call tools, and you know, so that's the that's what we're using right now. Yeah, I can get you. Um, do you have like the? Well, how much you pay per account? Um, you probably hold on. twenty. Yo, Joe, this is my TC. You know how much we pay for call tools? She don't know. I don't I, know either, man. I can get you hooked like a hundred dollars. I do dispo, man. I know how to get the deals <laughs> off, dog. You know, whatever acquisitions bring through the pipeline, you know, I see it then, and we handle the dispo. And that's how I like to run it, man. I, you know, we set goals for, you know, the acquisitions and dispo. We set goals and, you know, we just have company meetings on that. And I, I like it like that. Like, my acquisitions guy is good at acquisitions. You know, me being a realtor, knowing how to get to the closing table, I'm good at dispo. I know how to get to the, I know how to get the deal done. So, you know, that's kind of how we run it. And so um, what are your acquisition guys' goals every day? Um... They got to call at least three hours on a dollar. They got three hour shifts. Um, so we have, so we have the acquisitions and we have the person who's over them who screens the calls, make sure that, you know, they're saying the right thing, staying on script, not staying on the phone too long. Um, you know, things like that. So, um, we're trying to bring in at least five, 10 leads a day. Okay. And these are super, I'm guessing, a little bit more qualified leads than your regular cold callers because it's your people in-house. Yeah, yeah. So we not we don't use VAs. Everybody we have is in-house. Um, and, and, and you know what's funny? I was watching uh, Real Estate Disruptors with Property Force, and uh, I really like his model. All his cold call, all his acquisition guys are licensed agents as well. Mm -hmm. And they're on commission only because... Agents are already used to that kind of structure, so I, he said he was saying it was easier to build out a company with that, you know, with that type of uh, business model. So, eventually, I would want all my acquisitions guys to be licensed because, you know, not only did they had they went to school and got that you know base knowledge and know how not to get sued, um, you know, it just it just shows a little more commitment too than just getting the guy off indeed you know they and they not want to go to real to school to get you know further educated yeah i mean i have a little bit different view i think realtors most of the time are just awful <laughs> well no 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 no. i don't want them to be realtors you I just want them to be yeah 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 i mean i mean i, I and I got that, man. I, I, I watched that Property Force, um, you know, video a couple of times, and I just love what they're doing. And, and that's kind of like the model that, you know, I want to kind of model. And, and they're doing crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah, they're doing crazy numbers. So I just, you know, 
And I'm pretty sure you do the same. We watch who's actually doing the business and, you know, we take a little bit from each person and, and form our own, form our own thing. Yep. That's exactly what we do. Um, cold calling. We got your syndication stuff. Tell me a little bit more about the event. Like what time is it? Yeah, man, the event. So um, we're kicking off tomorrow from nine to nine. It's going to be 12 hours. It's going to be a marathon. You know, like a lot of people like, man, how long is the event? Man, you got a lot of people coming. I'm like, man, you're going to get your PhD in real estate in 12 hours. And it's going to be recorded so you can rewatch this. I know I am like, I'm going to get like, this was really like, I, I did it for the people. But like for me on, on the selfish tip, I'm going to get so much smarter from being at my own event. Like, like we've got, we, like, how can you not, you know? for twenty seven dollars and you can watch it from the comfort of your own home i know when we went through our event we had to get flights hotels you know the whole shebang and yeah. you know and that's that's before we even learned one got one jewel dropped on us <laughs> you know you could you could pay twenty seven dollars on this and watch it on your couch you know so um uh, how did you reach out to all these people man like was it your own personal network because that's a strong group of people dude yeah so everybody and the um everybody except the self storage and mobile home parks are in my network yeah so we we ended up adding self storage and mobile home parks because as we were promoting the event um we got a lot of flack like what about what about this asset class what about this asset class so we ended up adding you know self storage and mobile home parks as well um paul moore who's who spoke at my, and, and another reason why I got a, a big network, I, I run a multifamily meetup down here. So the, the, a lot of these guys is people who came and spoke at my meetup. Oh, that's awesome, bro. Me, yeah. the meetup was the best thing I ever did. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Because you get to, you get to handpick all the heavy hitters that you want to come in. It's like, um, you know, Gino, it's kind of like, uh, I get to pick who I want to mastermind with every month. Right. You know, you know, I get to pick like, you know, when we had Alvin Johnson on uh, last month, man, and everybody loved him. Like he just came with so much knowledge. And the fact that his business model is a nonprofit business model in the multifamily space. So you don't see that often. So, you know, when he's when he's dropping jewels, man, you listen, because it's like you don't see the nonprofit model in the uh, multifamily commercial space at all. I mean, he's the only person I know doing it. Yeah. And as many as conferences I've been to, he's the only one I know doing that model. Um, Thanks. Self-storage, everything else. Linda, could you explain what you mean? What are your goals for the month? So, like, what? how many deals are you shooting for a month, man? Ten, man. I'm trying to do ten deals a month. Um, We're not there yet. Like I said, we're just starting up. I mean, we started this two weeks before COVID hit. You know, we we was hiring like crazy. Like we, we had 13 acquisitions before COVID. We just kind of, it's kind of hard to get people in the office. Um, it was culture. That, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we want people in the office, but we, we got a lot of people working from home because of the COVID stuff, which is understandable. But, um, you know, once everything kind of get back to normal, we're going to rev up the hiring again and we, we want to have everybody in house. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Um, where can everyone else find you? Um, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Shazilla Jones Jennings, Instagram, Post Pro Shazilla. Um, you know, you can pretty much find me on those two platforms. I'm on LinkedIn, Rashad Jones Jennings. And, um, you know, I really ain't that hard to find. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Thank you, you so much. You going to be at the event, Strat? Yep. Man, it's going to be crazy, man. I, I, I like some feedback from you, too. I got you, bro. Um, where can they learn more about that event? Can you, uh, do you have a link on your phone or anything? Yeah, man. Um, the Atlanta summit.com. You want me to type it in the chat? Will it go to the comments? A minute. Let me see if I can get this go. It's just the Atlanta summit.com. you it'll take you straight to the event. And it's not Atlanta specific. The reason why we had Atlanta in there, because this was an actual physical event. We had Atlanta summit last year. And we just took it online because of the COVID stuff and we kept the Atlanta name. But what I realized is a lot of people got confused and thought it was only for if you were interested in the Atlanta market, but it's not. 
And so next year, we, you're going to have the same thing in Atlanta. So I can come out to Atlanta. We can go have a good time. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, go and book your ticket. <laughs> <laughs> man, you need to come to the A before then. I know, man. How far is Fresno from San Diego? Like six hours, dude. That's oh, okay. Good. That's that's a little stretch. I suppose been going to San Diego for the Fourth of July for a family reunion, but uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen. No, if you do go, I mean, I'd love to go down there. I got some other people I got to tune in with too. Okay. Yep. But all right, man. Thank you so much for coming on, dude. Man, I appreciate you having me, man. Oh yeah. All right. Peace out, bro. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Winning Move Podcast. I hope it helps you make all the right moves in your life and business. Please make sure to go like and subscribe on any podcast platform that you're listening to. And make sure to go follow me on Instagram at Strat Daddy. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you soon.